Welcome back to the channel guys. So today I'm in my Subaru FGT, also known as a WRX, and today I'm going to be showing you how to reflash your factory ECU. So stay tuned. So ECU reflashing is basically pulling the tune from your factory ECU making some edits some changes and then reflashing it back to the ecu and to do this we're going to need a couple pieces of hardware and software so today i'm just going to give you the rundown of everything you need and what you need to do in order to be able to reflash your factory subaru ecu and my car is a 2009 this is, this is applicable depending on the software you have from anywhere from i believe 2000 up to the modern subarus this video is going to be exclusively about Subaru issues, but it is applicable to modern Lancer Evos and a lot of Mitsubishis for the most part. All right, so stay tuned. All right, so you're going to need a laptop. You're going to need a Windows-based laptop. Um, you don't need a super fast laptop. Pretty much any laptop will work as long as it has some decent speed to it. And I believe anything with Windows 7 or newer should be able to work with what we need done today. In addition to this, you'll also need a Tactrix cable. Now, the Tactrix cable is the cable you use to connect your car, your car's OBD2 port, which you plug this end into your OBD2 port to your laptop's USB port. And this will allow connection of the laptop to your car. I highly recommend you get the genuine Tactrix cable like this one. Do not get the Chinese ones. They are hit or miss. And it also helps and is wise and I think it's proper to support the guys who actually put in the hard work of developing the product before it got copied by the Chinese. Okay, so we go to Tactrix.com first things first. And this is where you get to buy the official Tactrix cable. So you just go into here, Tactrix store. And somewhere in the bottom there, you have the Tactrix cable. I believe as of now, as of April 2022, I think it sells for about $160, $180 US, if I recall correctly. And you can also download ECU Flash from there. So, first things first, we're going to open up ECU Flash and we're going to cover what you really need to do. So, ECU Flash is very straightforward to install. We're not going to cover the install process. It's pretty much just a executable file you, you install onto your laptop and it's pretty much good to go okay so when you have ecu flash open it's gonna look something like this so my key is already on right so this is how we get the ecu com communicating through the tactrix cable and connected to your car so it's gonna have an interface like this first thing you need to do to get started is you select the correct vehicle in my case i'm using a 2007 plus subaru so i click that and that get, you need to do that in order to get the cable working if your car. Some cars require jumpers and whatnot. Mine doesn't. And it's as simple as that. Next, we're going to eat this icon which says read from ECU flash memory. So the factory ECU already has a tune on it. And it's good practice that whenever you plan to flash any vehicle, especially a stock vehicle, you pull the ROM, which is this one. You basically pull the tune from the ECU and you save it somewhere safe, so you can always revert to that. So we're going to do that now by just clicking on that. It's gonna give us this pop-up. It's gonna ask us basically to ensure that our key is on, and I hit OK, and it's gonna take a few seconds, but that is going to now just be pulling the ROM from the issue. At this point, you try not to, or you should never, when it's reading or writing, you try to never ever turn off the power on the, of the car or disconnect the cable. You can seriously brick the, K, the ECU if you do anything like that. So it's pulling the ROM and it should be done in a few seconds. Okay, with it done now, it's going to ask, it's going to say the operation completed so successfully. If you are done with your ECU, you can turn off the power of the car. So I hit OK. I turn off my ignition. And basically now, I'm going to remove the key from the ignition. It gives us our factory ROM, which is just this. So here you have a few things open. You can, what I usually do at that point is that I save it. And then when you save it and you reopen it, let me just do that for you now. Let's call this one. Let's save this one. So let's call it YouTube stock. 
and you can save it as an SRS format or a bin format and just for ease I'm going to save that on my desktop call it YouTube stock right and what I usually do so this is the the stock form of the map and I what I do automatically is that I save another copy of this map so that any changes I make I'm not overwriting my factory map so I just go in here again I hit save rom as and let's just call it YouTube mod it. So you can call it whatever name you want and automatically. So now I have a file saved as a YouTube stock, which is my stock ROM. And now I also have a modified ROM. So any changes I make, I will now be making it to this modded version. So what I usually do is that I just to get all of these useless, inaccessible windows um, tabs to disappear, I usually just close it. And then I just reopen. So we go to the desktop. Uh, what did we call it? YouTube modded, right? All right, YouTube modded. Open that up. It's as simple as that. So you can see everything is nice and clean. And then from there, you go in there and you make whatever changes you need to make. So Mica, this is already a modded map, but I'm just using it as an example. We can go in here and we can change everything. So for example, you want to change your boost limit. This is what most of the tables look like. So you would need to have the definition for your car. So for, for most Subarus and Evos and Mitsubishis, if you flash already has a definition. What the definition is, is that every single one of those tables are basically in a format that you cannot understand them. But someone went in and then they decoded all of that. And then now the definitions allow us to have a neat layout for every single table in the ECU, the factory ECU. So some definitions are better than others. Some guys actually have you pay for some definitions so that you can get additional features that the card did not come from factory with. A typical example is that you may get a, you may pay for a definition from someone or get it, and then you may be able to do launch control or two step with a factory ROM. Right, so let's just say we make whatever change we need to make. Let's just say we want to, okay, target boost for instance. Let's just say I'm targeting 13.7 pounds of boost and I just want to increase that. I'm going into here. Let's just say I just want to increase that. So I'm gonna use the bracket key to increase. If it just behave, let's just say I go one, two, three clicks or whatever be the change or whatever change I need to make. But in my case, I don't want to do that. Or let's just say I want to do that. That's the change I want to make. So now I've made my change. So what I do now is that you have a couple more options, right? So you could have pulled, you could have pulled the ROM from the factory ECU. Then now here is to write it, to permanently write it to the ECU. So the changes we've already edited, edited it now, but then the ECU still has not been changed. This one, you can do a test write. So you can just do a test write first. I usually do that. I started off doing that when I was just starting off. Well, I st that's repetitive, but I started off doing it like that. I was really scared to break my issue and whatnot. But for now, for the most part, I just permanently write it. So to do that again, let's just say we've already edited everything. Key on, we've already increased pools, timing, fuel, all the changes we need to make. You simply go back into here, red arrow pointing down at the chip, which is essentially telling you that you're going to permanently write your new changes to the ECU. And then we hit that. Again, we're going to get the prompt like here, telling us to make sure our, our ignition is on. You hit OK. And it's going to start flashing. You need to do nothing at that point. Just wait. Usually takes a few seconds. And I, I need to repeat, you do not turn off your laptop. At that point, you do not disconnect your USB or your tachyon cable at all. At that point, and for now, it is showing us that operation completed successfully. So now our new modified ROM has already been flashed to our ECU. We hit OK, and that we can then just turn off the ignition, and then our car is as good as modded. So that's going to cover most of the steps well that's pretty much everything you need to do in order to flash modify a rom from your ecu so we cover pulling it modifying it and then reflashing it back to the ecu